And I still don't understand what the business model is. Their public dispute with TikTok, not a good look. We've been talking about sample clearance problems. Why don't they have a database like this for sample clearance? Yeah, let's let's cover this because I'm I'm kind of hot about this. The uh, the you and the the newest deception from Universal Music Group. I look at this as a deception, a, a total deception, and uh, it connects to a lot. And let me just share my screen. Has anybody signed up to have access as a creator to their music? Well, here are the bullet points. Right, as we know. UMG just pulled down all of its music from TikTok because, according to UMG, they couldn't negotiate a fair situation with TikTok for licensing, and UMG did it for the artist, for the good of the artist. Now, those broke down. UMG pulled all its music from the platform. Artists were upset about it because it hurt them. (laughs) And now UMG has their own system that allows creators, small creators, to pay to use UMG's catalog in their content without content ID consequences or copyright strikes. So basically, you can use UMG music in your videos, no copyright claims, you can monetize on YouTube, um, only, only small creators can do this. Great. Chad? Uh, Focus is laughing. I understand why he's laughing. You so you can monetize, but do they take any yep. percentage? That that's not clear. It says yeah, you can monetize your video, but they might be taking half on the back end. Um, maybe maybe it looks like not, and oh. that's why they're they're. And I wonder what their definition of a big company is because <laughs> what is a big company? Like if you have a, a you know a channel with two million subscribers this might actually be useful for you. Are you considered a big company because you have millions of subscribers or what? That's what's confusing to me. But this shows a lot. Now, one, content ID is just a... I've always... I've consistently spoken about why I hate content ID. It's such an unfair, stupid system that only punishes those of us who aren't major labels like i can't navigate the content id system with any degree of speed or fairness as a independent producer because if i use a royalty free loop if i license a beat to two people and they both make content id claims i'm getting claims against me and there's no easy pathway to prevention umg can do whatever they want they can they can use my beat they can use a sample I made that I licensed to them, and now they're claiming ownership of it. There, there, there's really not much you can do about that. They always get the upper hand. They have the most leverage in those situations, so they throw their weight around. The other thing is, I think this is the obvious thing. This is probably what Erin wanted to talk to, but I think her, um, her, her internet service provider is there. UMG claimed that they pull out of TikTok because it was unfair to artists. And now they have this entire system that seeks to basically monetize the replacement of these licenses with the platform. Am I right? I mean, yeah. So they definitely, you you can't just pull this together in a month. Oh, uh, no. You can't had- just... It had it had to it had to be in the works for a minute, um, and I could be I could be completely wrong, and I'm prepared to be wrong. That's fine. But I, if I had to ch- to talk to UMG, I'd be like, "Look, stop it! You not you not gonna win this one. There's a hundred thousand songs that come out every single day. There's way too much other music for creators to use. Independent artists are you know." Like we talked about last last week, they're they're getting at least half of the revenue on Spotify now. Like there's just too much out there. You're not in a position right now to be starting services that are gonna replace the impact, the positive impact that TikTok could have. So I would say, hey, 
reverse course. I know it's embarrassing. You dug yourself a big hole. You're going to have to reverse course. Your artists are going to get continue to get upset. Your artists want their music on TikTok, not only because of the streams that it leads to, but the brand deals and other opportunities. I know you're used to having leverage and just throwing your weight around and getting your way, but this is not the case this time. It's not the case. So I would encourage them to reverse course as soon as possible and fire whoever led you down this path to begin with. Whoever led you down this path to begin with needs to be fired. If it's the CEO, he got to go. Like, because it's just not understanding the current landscape. And if I'm wrong, I'll come back on a future podcast and be like, my bad. UMG still pulls that kind of weight and they can still fuck a lot of shit up. And I was wrong. I'll do that in a few, in a few episodes. Like, if, if it comes out that I'm wrong, but I just, I just don't see how UMG comes out looking good because they everything they're doing now just is bad in my opinion. This creator program is stupid. And it's not- well, they do hold a lot of weight because they have the, the resources to create a pretty major and massive infrastructure such that they're able to just whitelist channels based on a subscription service. They're able to whitelist I mean, specifically YouTube, but YouTube is is the hotbed of content ID fuckery. I mean, what we covered this before, where where um, it's not necessarily the content ID system, but it's part of the YouTube uh, microsync system, where there are so many unclaimed royalties out there, and there's so much abuse of these systems. But two people were able to just claim royalties to songs they didn't write within YouTube's microsync. Uh, royalty system and generate steal rather tens of millions of dollars like this is a messed up system and here comes umg they're just they snap their fingers and they're suddenly embedded in that system and that's a system we don't get access to the average person doesn't get access to so so yeah they hold a lot of weight i'm just saying the only path that i see going like the only path forward I see is them continuing to just fuck shit up and make people mad. And at the end of the day, I feel like that's only going to backfire for them. And, and they're going to lose money and market share because of that. Like while more artists, other major labels and independent artists benefit from having their music on TikTok and people are using that button to go directly to Spotify and save these songs, like they're going to be losing a little bit of market share for as long as they're just shitting on the game board and just fucking up all the pieces. Right. At oh the, yeah. At the end of the day, they're going, they're, they're not going, they, they hold a lot of weight for sure. They still, you know, account for 30 something percent of the market share, whatever. But like, I just don't see like this creator program is not a good look. Their public dispute with TikTok, not a good look. Like nothing that they're doing now seems to be a good look. And it seems like their artists are starting to be more vocal about how they're moving. So I just, I just yeah. don't, I, I, I can't, maybe there's a way out for them that looks good and it makes them more money. I just can't see it. And I see, and I, well, and the thing is what, you know, they're charging what 1099 a month at the lowest level. And and let me, let me, I just want to make sure that I know the fact. Yeah. The highest level, $30 a month. How much of that is going to the artist? We don't know. Probably not a lot. (laughs) Well, and, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the more specific terms. And and I'll, I'll get more of this. Hopefully, I think we'll probably follow up on this because maybe it's reported what the artists are getting. Maybe we're going to get some feedback from artists who are signed to Universal and and have thoughts about this this creator program. But um, create it's called Creator Pro subscription, and it only you know they're they're clearing it across platforms, but YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and podcasting channels are included. TikTok's still excluded. So TikTok is still going to be a space for musical discovery that uh, does not include Universal Music Group's catalog. 
So this is just kind of, I think this is their way of saying, all right, we don't need you, TikTok. We got these other platforms in our pockets and we can just get money off that. But it's not a, it doesn't do the same. It, it, it's not, it doesn't replace TikTok's influence. UMG needs to help me understand, right? Because part of your promo and marketing strategy was to just tell artists to figure shit out on TikTok. Hopefully something goes viral and boom. But then you take TikTok away from them. Not only do you take TikTok away from them, you probably take, you know, 30% of the staff away from them. So it's like, yo, what are, you, what are these artists supposed to do? Artists are probably looking at, if, them, if I'm an artist on UMG's roster, I'm looking at them like, yo, like, what are y'all doing? Like, you just handcuffing me? Like, what do you, how do you expect me to get my music out there now that my product manager is gone and TikTok is gone? You guys are wilding right now. Like, what's the deal? I just, I, I know, Aaron, you, you, you stepped out, but like, I just don't, I, I could be wrong. I told him if I'm wrong about this, I will come back in a future podcast and apologize and say I was wrong, but I just don't see a healthy way out for UMG other than to stop just shitting on the board and just reverse course, figure some shit out with TikTok and put people's music back and say, I'm sorry. I know they're not going to do that because as the, the organization's ego as a whole, you know, is just not used to being in, in this position and they just want to throw their weight around. but that to me that's the best that's the best play going forward they're not gonna do it and this all seems dumb as hell and respect to everybody that i know that works at umg i don't know who all that i know still works there i haven't surveyed because you know it's like heartless to be like hey bro you still got your job so i don't know <laughs> but i'm saying this because i don't want people to think that i'm irreverent to the people who work at umg but this just seems so dumb to me and i almost wonder if they were so bold with the tiktok thing because they felt like they had this in their back pocket because you know we said you sent this like maybe a couple months ago before the tiktok thing happened like you said i think they might have felt like they're gonna throw their weight around and when tiktok didn't acquiesce they were like that we got y'all but this is so dumb to me because i'm like what does the integration look like do i have to upload all of my usernames into the portal so now i have access across all of the different platforms do you know what i'm saying and then if i manage multiple accounts like how are you going to check and then it says that you'll still be able to have access to the revenue from this and still be able to upload the songs even if you cancel your subscription you know it's just like it's like very murky water there's no clarity and i still don't understand what the business model is like how the fuck are y'all supposed to make money off of this do you know what i'm saying because it's like smaller creators are already on these databases where they can just use the money and or use the music and then also there's like the remix culture there's the pitch down pitch up culture there's the take like i was watching a friend of mine's video he's just like his tiktok or his youtube just blew and he was putting Frank Ocean tracks on there, but it was so dope because he only plays like three seconds of the track and then the track would fall out and it'd be Frank Ocean's voice and then he'd pitch it up. But it still set the mood and I was like, damn, he's smart because he has just enough to where you get the feeling of the song. And, you know, it's like transitioning scene to scene. So I'm like, with folks doing stuff like this, they're not, a, he's, he's not about to be like, let me just sign up for this UMG, like, He's making real money on YouTube. He can use anybody's song or he can fake the funk if he wants a big person song. Do you know what I'm saying? So I just yeah. don't know who's going to be like, buy the book with this. And I don't understand what the business model is. None of it makes sense to me. It just, it's dumb. I, I, I was telling Payne, like whoever came up with this idea needs to be fired. Like it's ridiculous. Like this whole thing just seems super ridiculous. And if you have questions about the tech, it's right, rightfully so, because what has any major label launched from a tech perspective that you've been like impressed with? You know, people continue to, to complain about it. UMG has the Uniport shit, right? Is that them? That's them. <laughs> yeah, yes. like you don't have, they haven't done anything that has like major labels are not tech companies as fun as exciting you would think from the outside looking in like oh music is kind of forward thinking it's exciting 
It's the exact opposite of that. So I, I just right now, independent artists and other major labels should be going super hard to continue to eat into UMG's market share because that's all they set up right now is a situation where you could just makes it just I mean, music is always going to be hard, but it's going to make it just a little bit easier for you to eat into their market share. Good job, UMG. The one thing I'll say that could help for this is the digital ads component, but they cap it at 3K per campaign. So <laughs> then that's not helpful. And what would be more helpful to me is just allowing people to clear individual tracks in an easy, streamlined manner for commercial use. I don't, I don't need to put you know, a Nicki Minaj song in my, in my vlog that's going to get 50 views if I'm a small creator and pay $30 a month for that. I don't, I don't see the benefit in that. It says up to $3,000 per campaign digital ad wise. I don't know if that means that you're spending 3k per campaign. It, it's just, that part doesn't seem helpful, but it could be helpful. They're just making it not helpful. That's what I'm saying. Anybody who could afford to do this isn't going to do it because they could get better, cheap or free music somewhere else. All the other libraries are like 10, 15, 30 dollars. If you really are like a YouTuber and you're trying to put a bunch of music in your stuff. But in, in fact, they can use the libraries. And if they're a big enough creator, then the library will sponsor their channel and give them ad revenue and free music. I'm still confused. This is so ass backwards. They should have just acquired yeah. somebody. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. Every, every time, every time major labels come to the table, if it's something new, like they just have a tendency to like overvalue kind of what, what it is they do or bring to the table. And this is just another case of that, to be honest. Like I, I just, yeah, I, I'm. I don't have anything else to say. I just want to. I want to see. I want to continue to see this play out. I'll be on the sidelines with my popcorn, just shaking my head, be like, "These cats are wilding." Um, well, here's what I have to say. We're, we've been talking about sample clearance problems. Why don't they have a database like this for sample clearance? Because look, they're acting on behalf of the artist and licensing out their their material for this flat monthly rate. And they're representing the artist's underlying composition as well as the, the master recording. I don't know how they're able to do this unless they somehow had every single publishing and publishing entity and, and writer um, sign off on this. It's giving a I don't little know. illegal. That's what I feel. It's, it's giving this. Yeah, yeah, like either, either, it's, <laughs> either it's illegal and it's infringing on creators' rights or or they have a really small catalog and they're just rushing the release of this as a fuck you to TikTok. But regardless, cool. Tracklib's doing it. You're UM motherfucking G. You can you have way vaster resources. Way vaster resources. Yeah. Why don't we have something like that? Why don't we have something like Tracklib even at a higher price point? Because you're UMG, right? You got your noses in the air. So create something that we can use i just think that it sucks that i don't think people realize like how many people it, it affected right because people were just oh it's a major label but then they got in grooves they got all these other subsidiaries so it affects a lot of independent artists as well so if it did affect you as an independent artist i'm about to get on my suge knight and be like hey come on over to two lost we'll get your music up on TikTok. We won't be part of no stupid creator program. Come rock with us. And it's only $3 a month and you won't have these problems. Let people dance to your music on TikTok. You know, you want that exposure. We'll never do something ridiculous like this. So use our promo code at odds and just come check it out. This is a good opportunity for us because UMG is not looking good out here, but I don't think people real. I heard it's even affecting people that don't even have like it's it's like they're they're like falsely claiming people's music that have nothing to do with with UMG on the publishing side or the master side. Like they just it's just a overreaching right now. 
I think they're spending more money trying to put up those claims. My question is, if y'all use TikTok as y'all's main source of a and ring what are y'all doing when y'all's a and rs are sitting on TikTok, a platform <laughs> that no longer has y'all's music? And then you're asking artists like, hey, I found you on TikTok, bro. I'm uh, da-da-da at umg.com. I'd be like, what? I just, none of this math is mathing. This is what I'm saying. When I used to like, like really lean in on majors and how dumb this shit is, and even just the way that they pay artists, the structure, people be like, you're a hater. It's because you never, you wish you could. I'm like, I've been there. I've been in the seats. I've been in the offices. I've done the tours. I had an artist sign to Def Jam, but that's the only major. But I've worked with it. And then even currently, like I work with artist teams. Oh, I'm consulting for a label right now as well. Like I, I get it. I'm gonna get the money, but this shit is dumb as hell. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when, like it just doesn't make any sense. Which is why I was like, let me go try to see if I can get my leg into this consulting thing because they don't know what's going on. It's really a bunch of old dudes sitting up in an office. Like we should put a budget behind this, this, and this. Like. It's really dumb. They don't know what's going on. So independence, back to what Dame said, shout out to my cousin Suge. Like, for real, for real, this is your time. Go get it, a budget from, from a distributor and let your shit off. Like, don't, like, go do your thing. It's, it's your time. I can't wait to see what happens in the music industry this year in 2024 because the labels are showing their hands. It's like, we're dumb and we can't do anything about it. We're going to lay everybody off, all of our young blood, keep the old heads, give them extra bonuses, yep. and then we're going to take your biggest platform from you. Yeah. And then we're going to offer you some bullshit. Yep. Yo, independent artists, once again, if you don't want your distributor stopping your music from getting in all them dancing videos that hype up your music and get your streams up, come on over to Two Laws. We allow all that. We allow your music to get everywhere. Be heard everywhere is our tagline, including TikTok. So, yeah, it's a no-brainer at this point, especially if you're under some type of UMG umbrella. It's wild out here. And we're going to talk more about um, discovery platforms uh, next episode because there there are some data out and there there's some interesting. I don't know. I'll, I'll save it for the the episode, but I noticed some discrepancies. But otherwise, it's it's good data and it's great for uh, artists to understand. So once again, appreciate you tuning in. And like we said, now is the best time to get. <laughs> Free music distribution, three months. Do it. Twoloss.com. Use the code at odds. Three months free. Your music stays up forever if you want it to, even if you don't actually pay after the trial expires. So we'll catch you on the next episode. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for supporting. Shout out to everyone that signed up and shout out to everyone that just tunes in. Peace. Peace.